Sehr geehrte Damen und Herren, Ladies and Gentlemen, may I welcome you to our press conference for the presentation of the 2011 results. Uh, together with my colleague, Willy van Riet, I will take you through the results and uh, our business activities in 2011. Let me start with a brief description of the market environment in 2011. North America, a difficult market environment, no major improvement in new housing construction even in our in our core segment that is single and um, two family houses there was even a slight decline which had an impact on our revenue figures the environment in western europe was more positive slight growth in germany in new housing construction in germany france belgium and switzerland in the united kingdom and the netherlands new housing construction stabilized at a low level italy was weaker in eastern europe an entirely different trend in poland slight growth in a uh, single and two family houses same in czech republic and russia the rest of eastern europe as far as our market is concerned was weak or even declining slovakia hungary romania bulgaria and the balkan countries a very difficult market environment for us as far as our performance is concerned, we were doing quite well in these markets, and I'm going to show you the reasons for this development. In the German market, which in terms of new housing starts or building permits, rather, was positive, it wasn't a strong revival of new housing construction, but only a single-digit single, single digit growth rate, so, because uh, building contractors had not increased their capacity. They were focusing on capacity utilization. Uh, we take it, uh, and this is a positive factor for 2012, I take it that many of the projects that are still in the pipeline will um, be implemented in 2012. A second market is important for us, that is the renovation market, which is particularly significant for the roof tile business. Germany has been taking a positive development and our sales of clay roof tiles increased. There was slight growth in Poland in one and two family houses. Uh, the multifamily housing market was declining. Nevertheless, we were able to gain market shares and increase our sales. Similar situation in the Czech Republic. A strong boost to growth as far as our products is concerned and gains in market shares. I already mentioned the United States. Belgium was strong in the first half of the year, a slight decline in the second half. The renovation market is strong, and uh, we've been uh, gaining uh, market shares in all our product segments. The Dutch market is at a low level and we don't really expect a revival. There was slight growth in the first half of the year, but growth slowed down again. Again, the renovation market uh, was on a sound level and that was good for our roof tile business. In France, we noticed a slight upward trend in single family and uh, multifamily housing construction. We've been able to increase our market shares, particularly in the renovation market. For many years, um, we had been uh, increasing our market shares in France. Coming from the Alsace region, we were building capacity. Um, we were increasing capacity most recently in Angers in the western part of France. And in 2011, for the first time in our history in France, uh, bricks outperformed uh, uh, substitution products in France in single and two-family housing construction. So bricks have 
come to be the leading building material in that segment. That is a great success for ourselves and our competitors in the French market. In the United Kingdom, we had a slight increase in the first half of the year, but a slight decline in the second half, nevertheless. Uh, we were doing quite well, particularly the uh, clay roof tile uh, business was performing well with double-digit growth rates. Here is a chart illustrating uh, these developments. Our company in uh, practically all of its uh, essential markets was able to outperform the market through our new product portfolio, which has been renewed over the past two years. We have repositioned ourselves in individual markets with new products and new product solutions and with new sales teams that are being trained. So in this environment, we were able to generate such satisfactory figures. Let's take a look at the Wienerberger strategy. Up to 2009, Wienerberger pursued a growth strategy marked by acquisitions and by the entry into new markets. In 2009, in August 2009, when the new managing board team took over, we cut fixed costs by 200 million. We achieved our working capital targets, that is less than 25% of net sales. Originally, we were at 30%, so we were able to significantly reduce our inventories, and we were highly disciplined as far as investments are concerned. So that was a reorientation of the company. Combined with that, the company repositioned itself in terms of products and product solutions. Now and in the future, we will be focusing on future-oriented building solutions for energy-efficient construction. Over the past two years, we've been making strategic investments. Willi is going to tell you more about our investment activities, and you will be seeing where our priorities are in order to be able to market new products. We have a strong capital structure, a strong balance sheet. That was important after the restructuring in 2009. We have an equity ratio of 60% and a relatively low gearing of 18%, which is very low um, considering uh, the standard in our sector. And as far as our covenants are concerned, we have a comfortable headroom there. Liquidity and term structures, another uh, priority of ours. As of the end of 2011, we have a cash reserve of more than 500 million. We have smoothed out the term structure. We have a more balanced term structure. You are aware of our bond issues, including the one this year, 200 million in Belgium, Luxembourg, and Austria, which could be placed successfully in the market. So from today's point of view, we have a good structure. Nevertheless, uh, we are being confronted <coughs> with a number of trends that are making life in our sector, in the building materials sector in particular, rather difficult. And let me try and uh, explain how we react at Wienerberger. There is a great deal of uncertainty, declining consumer confidence, limited visibility, and uh, uh, financing bottlenecks due to the discussions we're all aware of. These are trends which will be continuing well into 2012. So we're still confronted with these trends, and we have to address these challenges. We have set up an operational excellence program, and I'm going to give you examples of that. That has become the main aspect of our operational business. Competitive 
and regulatory mechanisms have increased at the European level and also at the national level. I'm afraid to say regulation has increased. Uh, we are uh, trying to offer innovative products and system solutions in order to position ourselves well in the energy efficiency sector. As far as the market environment is concerned, particularly new residential construction, which started coming under pressure uh, in 2009 and even earlier in the United States, we have found that the renovation market is much more resilient and resistant to the crisis. So we have uh, positioned ourselves more strongly. Um, we're aiming at a greater exposure to the renovation market. Through our system competence, uh, particularly in the roof segment, and through the broadening of our core business and the increased entry into the renovation market, and not least the acquisition of PipeLife. Operational excellence, I mentioned that before. This is um, what Hans Windisch is responsible for. He's not with us today. Um, the portfolio has been redefined at plant level. More than 50 plants had to be closed down, and our product mixes had to be allocated to uh, newly allocated to the individual sites with highly stringent supply chain management, and we're working on energy efficiency. We are pursuing a best-of-class policy as far as our uh, competitors are concerned, and we are trying to increase our uh, competitive advantages. Health and safety plays an important role. We have imposed a zero-tolerance zero policy upon ourselves, uh, and uh, we are cooperating closely with uh, uh, the individual sites and uh, with uh, the Works Council uh, to improve the situation, and we have already made great progress in that respect. As regards our innovative approach, we have about 1,000 staff members in Europe alone working in sales, product positioning, marketing, etc. We have launched a training campaign to improve the quality of our sales staff, and we can already see the positive impact as regards performance in the individual markets in 2011. Our innovative products such as DryFix and uh, uh, high thermal insulation uh, clay blocks or the renovation packages for roof setters, all that has been very well accepted by the market, and we expect further improvements in the years to come. One thing is important uh, to remember, in 2011, we were able to pass on the cost of inflation to the market, uh, despite the fact that we were winning market shares, we were also increasing our prices. And that, I think, is a strong signal showing that sales are doing well and our product positioning is right. We're also broadening our core business. Um, a couple of years ago, the breakdown was 80% new build and 20% renovation of the infrastructure. Now we are at 70 to 30%. And after the acquisition of PipeLife, which we hope, uh, subject to approval by the authorities, uh, will be finalized in May or June this year, the breakdown will be 60% new build and 40% renovation. So the company is now resting on a very sound and resilient basis. Uh, two major steps regarding our industrial portfolio, which we are streamlining. We've been able to acquire 
um, another 25% of Tondach Kleinstädten, that is, we now hold 50%, and we have been acquired, we've acquired the remaining 50% of pipe life. So we have a very clear and streamlined portfolio. Uh, strategy. A brief overview of PipeLife. PipeLife is operating in 27 countries with 27 plants. Revenues 800 million EBDA, 69 million 2,650 employees who are going to be integrated into the Wienerberger Group. Pipelife is strong in water management. That accounts for 45% of Pipelife's revenues. That is an essential segment which we intend to build on. Buildings and building technology relates closely to our own core business. Here again, we can see synergies there and utilities and specialties accounting for 20, uh, 29 and 7% each. These are also sound segments which we will build on. <coughs> uh, now, why have we acquired PipeLife? Not only because after 20 years of partnership with Solvay, Solvay uh, opted for a strategic reorientation and offered us the remaining 50%. Um, Pipelife is a strong and a sound business, always among the top three in Europe, strong also in Austria, in Scandinavia, Sweden, Norway, the Netherlands. These are the essential markets, and there is a good strategic fit with the Wienerberger portfolio. The corporate culture is similar to that of Wienerberger. Focus, uh, the focus is on innovation. There is a lean management, and the corporate culture is similar. So after a successful 20-year joint venture with Solvay, we will be able to integrate the company rather quickly. Tondach, you know that Tondach is the market leader in Central and Eastern Europe with 90, 19 plants. 50% are held by two families from Styria. It's a modern plant. And step by step, we're now integrating the activities of uh, Tondach and Wienerberger in the countries concerned. 2011, as far as Tondach is concerned, saw an increase in revenues and results, a good performance in Austria and the Czech Republic. New capacity was added in Hungary, but is not yet being utilized 100% because the market environment is difficult. But we are confident that together with Tondach, we will be able to expand our presence in Eastern Europe. By way of summary, I would say that uh, we've succeeded in putting the company on a sound basis. We have strong organic growth. That was our target for 2011 on the basis which we had created over the past 10 years with a lot of investment. On that basis, we wanted to generate organic growth. This is what we've succeeded in doing. We've streamlined the industrial portfolio. We're still focused on cost management. And we have a strong capital structure, which we are going to maintain in the future. Um, Willy van Riet is now going to present uh, the results in detail. Good morning, a cordial welcome. The income statement for 2011, the figures we are presenting this year are audited figures. So these are the final figures. Nothing is going to change here. Revenues for 2011 up by 16% over the previous year. I will be talking about volumes and prices later. Operating EBDA up by 23%. Here again, I will tell you how this uh, came about and uh, which are the most important countries and regions. The important thing is that the margin, the EBDA margin, increased by 0.7%. That means the business has improved in substantive terms over 2010, although in many markets the situation 
didn't improve. In fact, it deteriorated even in some countries. So that shows that we are quite strong and we were doing the right thing in recent years, new products for better results. Depreciation increased from 200 to 210 million. The 210 include 13 million uh, of extraordinary depreciation for plants that were closed down and that had to be written down. And we have a, a depreciation on the assets of Tondach, Tondach Kleinstetten for half a, 210 million for Steinzeug for the full year. So we are being cautious in our accounting, and this is why depreciation is 210. Um, operating EBIT up to 48.5 from 10.7 the year before. Impairment charges to goodwill, 2.6 million. So we are doing this quite consistently as we did in 2009. We had a major impairment that year. Now we are working on the basis of the same parameters, and the 2.6 million are accounted for by the impairment of Serbia. The one-off effect of the Bramak Tondach stock swap, um, we've commented on that. I'm sure you're all aware of the figures, 33.2 million non-recurrent uh, result, and that is shown separately from the operating EBITDA. The financial results improved significantly um, for two reasons. One is uh, the result of pipe life. I'll come back to that later. And uh, interest, interest income. I'll say more about that later. Um, the important thing to remember here is the profit after tax, which improved by 75 million over the year before. Even if you deduct the hybrid coupon, that would be 32 million. What remains at the end of the day for 2011 is a positive result. And that, I think, is an important and a good message which we'd like to convey to you because we're back in the black figures. The results are broken down by region. Uh, the picture hasn't really changed a great deal from the previous years. In brackets, you find the previous year's figures. Northwest Europe is our strongest figures in terms of contribution to EBTA, 53% contribution to EBTA, 40% contribution to revenues. Central and Eastern Europe is not dead either. 30% contribution to revenues and 40% contribution to the EBTA of the group. So we are generating enough EBTA in that region for a positive development. North America accounts for no more than 7% of revenues. Contribution to EBTA is minus 3%. Investments and others, um, the improvement of the result is not because Heimo's salary has been cut to such an extent, but because Steinzeug is being consolidated as well as the business in India. If you look at the results by product, and that again is consistent with what we were reporting last year, the roof renovation business is very strong and also in the facing break segment, uh, um, revenues are improving, so we are re already reporting better figures there. Investments and other, again, that is the impact of Steinzeug. Um, 
Revenues overall plus 16 percent, 9 percent of which is organic growth, 7 percent the consolidation effect of Steinzeig and Tondach. So 14 percent is due to volume developments, 2 percent due to price developments, and that was enough to compensate for the cost inflation. This is what we were aiming at through targeted price increases we wanted to compensate for cost inf cost inflation we FX effect is practically zero because the weaker, the stronger currencies compensated for the weaker ones, but altogether plus 16 percent. Um, the price increases in 2011, you will remember in 2010, uh, the average prices were minus 5% compared with 2009, but now successively we've been able to increase or improve our prices quarter by quarter, and we are at plus 2% over the year. And in 2012, we will continue increasing our prices. Um, the trend is there. So. Uh, Cost inflation is covered by higher average prices. Part of that is due to the improved product mix. Of, we can't report that separately. It's almost impossible to make su to show such a breakdown. But the figures shown here include both effects. EBTA increase is clear. This is due to the European markets in. Practically all European markets, uh, we see a higher contribution to EBTA. North America is the only region where we see a decline compared with the previous year. In 2010, uh, the first half year was quite strong in America, and then uh, things went down in the second or third in the second half of 2010, and that continued into 2011. Of a total increase of 23 percent, of that, uh, 28 is from organic growth and 20 from acquisitions. Tondach, Steinzeug is the biggest contribution, but other acquisitions in Belgium, minor things, also contribute to that. The financial result has improved thanks to higher income from investments. Basically, here we are talking about pipe life. Half of the pipe life net income is being consolidated under income from investments in associates. That's almost almost all of that is from pipe life activities and interest income and interest expenses also improved significantly compared with the previous year because we had more cash and we were paying less interest. Optimization costs, a question that is put quite frequently. What have we been doing? There were special write downs. This is due to some fine tuning of our operating network, of our plant network, which we're doing continuously. In the course of 2011, we closed down five plants, three of which had already been mothballed, and we mothballed another six plants across the group in the United Kingdom. We closed a plant in Belgium, closed a plant in Croatia, in Hungary because of the decline of the market. Um, plants were mothballed. We closed down a plant in Croatia one in Hungary. This shows that optimization is part of our day-to-day -day business. It's nothing new. Uh, it's no longer as uh, substantial as it was in 2009, but it takes time to shift production, to change the product mix, and to optimize production. Optimization cost us eight million in cash, most of which in the fourth quarter. And 
if we correct operating EBDA for the one-off optimization cost, the margin is practically back to the fourth quarter of 2010. Uh, we also had one-off income in the fourth quarter of 2010. So if you correct the results for that, uh, Q4 2011 is back better than Q4 2010. And that is quite in accordance with the revenue increase in the fourth quarter. But the fourth quarter is relatively small, and therefore an amount uh, like 7 million has an impact on the result. So we've had our optimization costs out of the 8 million booked this year. We expect a result of two to three million per year in the coming year. That is our payback expectation. Some of the optimization uh, was done in the United States where we continued optimizing the plant structure. Although, and we're going to talk about the U.S. market later on, currently we are getting some positive news, but we are prudent, we are cautious. We've taken the measures that need to be taken in order to bring the business back into the black figures and uh, to close the year with a zero in terms of EBITDA. We have a strong balance sheet structure, a gearing of only 18%. That has been the case since 2009. Financially speaking, uh, the business is strong. We have an equity ratio of 60%, which is mainly due to gross cash flow in 2011, which was up by 53 million from 2010. And that is an important message. In our working capital, we increased uh, only by 25 million, despite a strong increase in revenues. If we compare that with 2010, in 2010 we were still um, reducing our stocks. Of course, I'd love to sell the same amount of stocks every year, but you can only sell surplus stocks once, and we had the effect of that in 2010. I'll come back to working capital in greater detail later on, but we are where we want to be in terms of working capital. That is 25% of revenues. 25% of net sales. We will be further optimizing that because projects such as supply chain management are intended to do just that. But our performance is already very good. Normal CapEx, 102 million. We will have to invest more, going up to a maximum of 60% of depreciation. We're not there yet. I'll be speaking about investments later on. Divestments and other, the major part of that is the premium we got on the Brahmark shares, which we exchanged or swapped against uh, Tondach shares. Growth investments, 56 million. That includes Tondach. It also includes Euro ceramic, ceramic pipes, a ceramic pipes business in the Netherlands, which we bought. It also uh, contains uh, the acquisition of a facing brick manufacturer in Belgium and 15 million, which we were investing in southern Germany and Italy in solar facilities because that allows us to generate additional savings. In terms of dividends and hybrid coupon, uh, we uh, paid out 62 million. That includes 20 million for the share buyback. In 2011, we generated a net, net cash flow, which is an important figure. Uh, there sh something should be left over in net terms at the end of the year. Working capital, we are at 24.2% uh, uh, of net sales. When you look at stocks, they've gone up by 7%. 2% of that is accounted for by organic growth compared with 8% organic growth in volumes. 
So we have kept the increase in stocks under control, and 6% is due to consolidation effects. That is additional consolidation of Tondach, Steinzeig, and others. Um, receivables at uh, the previous year's level, level, 25 days outstanding. We have no problem um, with our receivables. We consolidated Tondach for six months, and at the end of the year, or at the end of the quarter, the level of receivables is higher than the year before. Uh, and uh, there's been a reduction from 51 days to 40 days. So um, payment was made faster than the year before, but working capital is stable, and we are keeping that under control. Total investments, 102 million compared with 61.7. The 102 million include 45 million investments in new technology and new production facilities in the existing plant network. That is an important message. In 2010, that was far less, just a few million included in the 61. So we are investing in new products that are to be marketing. We have to build these plants for infill blocks because we want to market these plants. And even after these investments, we are still at 49% of depreciation for our normal capex. I already mentioned growth investments. These are smaller steps, bolt-on acquisitions. Net debt development in 2011, we generated 204 million gross uh, cash flow, 158 million of which were invested in growth investments and normal capex and 16.9 million uh, in working capital and other so 20 million generated in net terms we financed the consolidation of tondach at 74 million and uh, divestments that is the premium paid uh, by Mounier for Bramark. We got a uh, 44 million net, and that uh, covers the Tondach Bramark consolidation. In addition, we paid out 11 million dividends, a 32 million hybrid coupon, and a share buyback for 20 million. So the increase in net debt is 65 million altogether. This does not um, lead to a deterioration of our debt situation. In January, we placed a bond in retail markets in Belgium, Germany, and Austria. The total volume was 200 million. Again, that served to strengthen our balance sheet because we wanted to have enough cash available and to reduce our dependence on bank lines, uh, also for the financing of working capital. As you know, we have placed uh, bonds of smaller volumes quite frequently. We always try to find the right window for uh, bond issues. Um, as regards our liquidity and our term structure, we have uh, available cash of 704 million, which covers more than the um, maturities of 2012. It says here on a pro forma basis, including pipe life, but this is not the case. That was a mistake. It's excluding pipe life. But as you can see, we have already um, uh, included the money for uh, pipe life in 2012, and the uh, bonds that will be, uh, what, what's going to be to mature uh, for pipe life will be in 2016. So that is all very well covered. The hybrid bond, for those of you who tend to forget, I will include that every time. It's not a convertible, it's a, 
a perpetual, so on perpetuity basis. Maturity is in 2017, but it depends on us, us whether we're going to call that or not. If we uh, decide not to repay, the coupon will change from fixed 6.5% to variable three months Euribor plus 325 basis point. And according to IFRS, it's going to be 100% equity for the rating agency. Agency, it only counts as 50% equity. Our Treasury figures net debt uh, 1.7, which is way below uh, the figure in our covenants of 3.5%. And as far as EBDA is concerned, compared with interest results, we've improved greatly over 2010. Our own internal target is net debt below 2.5% of EBDA. That also holds for 2000. Uh, 12, and we've already communicated that the 50% uh, acquisition of Pipe Life is not going to change anything about that. So the share buyback program, as you know, uh, we had a program providing for the buyback of up to 2% of our share capital. That has been completed. We have uh, bought back 20. Point, uh, shares for 20.8 million, paying an average purchase price of 8.83 euros per share. We've done that because in negotiations, uh, uh, you can use these shares in negotiations about smaller uh, takeover transactions. And if and when such transactions come up, we're going to use the shares for this purpose. Thank you very much, Willy. I would like to quickly take you through the individual markets. A lot has already been said. Let me look at the individual regions, Central Eastern Europe. An increase in revenues by 11%, operating EBDA rose by 19%. This is a very positive development. It's important to note that this happened despite the difficult market environment in Central and Eastern Europe. The margin is 17.4%, uh, which is very positive. Basically, there's nothing new. We could gain market shares in all markets. In Russia, uh, business has developed favorably. We have two plants which are uh, practically fully utilized. The Czech Republic, here we could uh, also gain market shares in Poland shows a sound growth. Bulgaria, Romania, Southeastern Europe, as I've already indicated, these are very difficult markets. We succeeded thanks to our business policy and proactive pricing. We could gain market shares in Romania and uh, in Bulgaria and in the other uh, South. Uh, Central Eastern European countries, we could uh, also show a very sound performance. Let's take uh, Hungary, for instance, a very difficult market. When you compare it with the time before the crisis, the market actually declined by over 70 percent. And here we succeeded in maintaining our position. We could even gain market shares. We could increase prices. And ultimately, we uh, had a positive EBITDA. Northwestern Europe, it's characterized by stability, slight growth. I've mentioned France briefly. Again, developments are positive. We could increase our margin. The EBITDA is 136 million in this region. So. This is proof of sound management. And as I've already indicated, we outperformed the market in all those countries. And prices were raised accordingly. Markets uh, such as uh, the Netherlands, uh, Belgium, uh, France, United Kingdom are the major contributors. Central and uh, Northwest Europe, sorry, Germany, uh, here again, an increase in margins. I'm quite honest, we are not yet fully satisfied with our performance. This 
is linked with the industrial structure, uh, the regional um, structure in Germany of uh, the brick business. But uh, we will continue uh, working towards an improvement. So Italy, of course, showed a fairly low level because of the overall economic development. North America. This is a region with which we certainly are not happy. We had a negative EBITDA in 2011. Of course, we carried out a restructuring, as uh, my colleague Willi um, explained. A lot of or the major share of restructuring um, costs uh, was for North America. We've made the necessary adjustments, and we have taken the necessary steps in order to um, get back into the black figures in North America. And hopefully, uh, there will be a positive market development and a positive contribution to EBIT. But this cannot yet be expected for 2012. Uh, investments. Here, uh, again, we have a positive uh, trend also as a result of pipe life. And then, of course, Steinzeug. Here uh, we include the consolidation costs. Summing up, ladies and gentlemen, I think we can say that we've shown a very good performance in 2011. We had a revenue increase of 16%. We could uh, exceed the $2 billion, uh, mark. We could increase our operating EBITDA as a result of our uh, operational excellent program and uh, EBIT, uh, well, 100 percent, and we had profit after tax in the amount of 40 million. This means that uh, Wienerberger is positioned for the future. Permit me a very brief outlook for the first quarter of 2012. Of course, visibility in many markets is still low in particular Central and Eastern Europe and also North America. But my assumption is that we will be able to cover uh, cost inflation by increasing our prices. We have already taken the first steps towards implementation. We will be very uh, prudent and cautious when it comes to investments. So we have set a target of 60 percent, and we don't want to exceed that. In Mr. van Riet's um, presentation, you've seen that we focus on uh, innovation, so we will invest a great deal in innovation. We want to achieve uh, higher revenues in the individual markets. We are strong when it comes to our product range. We want to uh, have the right product mix for the individual markets. We want to focus on cost reduction, and uh, we want to offer complete solutions for the uh, construction uh, materials industry. So um, Northwestern Europe shows a st or will probably show a stable development, hopefully a slight growth, particularly in Germany and Central and Western Europe. As regards Eastern Europe and North America, I'm a bit uh, more cautious. We cannot yet make a prediction. Price increases uh, should cover cost inflation. At least this is my assumption, my assumption at the moment. Cost inflation will be around 3 to 4 percent, depending on the individual market. 15 percent of our revenues are energy costs, and here we um, have uh, resorted to hedging. We expect another 15 million, which we will, of course, have to consider in our price increases. 50 percent uh, is uh, hedged, and uh, altogether we'll have about 210 million in terms of uh, impairments, about 25 percent or lower than 25 percent, and we will continue uh, optimization measures. 120 million uh, are envisaged for CAPEX, normal CAPEX. In this context, you should also consider uh, the purchase price of, uh, uh, for pipe life, which uh, will 
be included in CAPEX. The first quarter has already started. We were off to a good start. It was very satisfactory in all markets, including uh, North America and Eastern Europe. So January was a good month. February, of course, saw cold weather, lots of snow, so there was hardly any business. And March, of course, will be a decisive month. Uh, we will see whether it's going to be the strongest month in the first quarter. But anyway, we were off to a good start. The negative impact of uh, the weather in Eastern Europe, of course, hit Tondach particularly hard because uh, there was so much snow in the Balkans that there was hardly any business. Dividends, we decided that we want to suggest an increase of the dividend in our annual general assembly, uh, 12 percent, sorry, 12 euro cent. Last year, we paid out a dividend of 10 cents, even though we uh, had a negative result. This had a positive impact on our business activities in 2011. and. Because of the low visibility and difficult market environment, we suggest a 20 percent increase. This is in line with the development of our business. Uh, as regards our future dividend policy, it will, of course, depend on the business development. I wouldn't uh, venture to uh, make a forecast here. Uh, Two years ago, we said we want to make Wienerberg uh, profitable again. We want to pay out a dividend to our shareholders, and this is what we are doing. And this will also characterize our dividend policy in the future. As regards medium-term goals, we will focus on uh, cost management. We will be careful when it comes to investments and expenditures. We'll focus on organic growth. We do have the capacities in the individual uh, countries and markets. We invest in innovative products and system solutions. We have, the, we have improved our sales uh, and marketing activities, and uh, we will focus on the integration and further development of pipe life this year. And don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, the pipe uh, segment, Pipe Life Semmelrock <coughs> Steinzeug, will bring us uh, revenues in the amount of over one billion, so that we see uh, many opportunities to uh, improve our position in these uh, segments. Thank you very much for your attention. Mr. van der Riet and myself are available for questions. I must apologize. It's Shrove Tuesday, and uh, we did not provide the famous Krapfen, the donuts, uh, which is a traditional uh, food. Uh, but I think. Uh, you will bear with us. Erste Frage wäre, um First question. A price increase of 2%. I think the development in the last nine months has been flat. Will there be new price increases this year? Did you suggest 3 to 4%? I think uh, price increases are always uh, in, uh, given um, or at the end of the first quarter. Well, what I said was that we will uh, make the necessary price adjustments. If I add up the uh, Q4 effects, we stand at more than 50 EBITDA. What is due to the winter months? Uh, probably it's difficult to say, but could you give us any uh, indications and why weren't these effects adjusted on the basis of the operative result, the operating results? Well, 
we only show extraordinary uh, results or expenditures, uh, non-recurrent um, expenditures separately. It would be <laughs> virtually impossible uh, to do that for all the other expenditures. Well, that we're talking about ongoing business. Tondag Pramak, of course, is something that we show separately because it's a huge item. And the restructuring that we did in 2009, again, was shown separately. It was a non-recurrent uh, event. Well, restructuring costs, of course, uh, occur every year, right? Uh, as regards 2012, you have closed down several uh, plants. Uh, what is your uh, target regarding uh, the capacity utilization? You've mentioned North America. I think we're talking about a few millions. And then net debt. What will happen once pipe life has been consolidated? We don't want to have any wrong expectations. As regards cap capacity utilization, we increased it from 60 to 65 percent between 2010 and 2011. Uh, it's a bit too early, actually, um, to make a statement regarding capacity utilization this year because of the uncertainty um, on the markets. But we hope that we will be able to increase it. As regards North America, we said uh, that we expect a zero EBITDA in North America. But of course, uh, we wouldn't mind uh, uh, you know, achieving um, black figures. As I said, we want to um, reduce our debt with or without pipe life by the end of the year. The pipeline figures are well known, 160 million, 50% for shares. We will have another 10 million for Solvay. But that will be a zero sum game. So at the end, we have 70 million debt. And this will not increase uh, 70 million EBTA and 30 million uh, investments and uh, impairments. Right off, sorry. Could you uh, say something about uh, pipe life capacity utilization? This is very difficult. Um, we're talking about extrude extruders. They can run 24 hours, or they can also work in one or two shifts. Now, could EBITDA be increased in 2012? So what is your goal? Is it the 5 million? I haven't seen 500 million. The 500 million are still valid. You're right. We said 2014, 2015, depending on the economic development. But yes, I would say the 500 million stand. I have two questions. In your guidance for 212 depreciation, uh, 210 million, does that include pipe life? No, it's business as usual by Wiener Berger. So we don't want to mix up things because that would not be transparent enough. In January, you said you had volume growth. Is that organic volume growth? There were not so many consolidation effects in January. Um, there is Tondach, but there is also organic growth. Yes, of course. Of course, Tondach depends a great deal on the weather, and uh, the results will be very modest because of the weather situation. And the final question, you mentioned extraordinary impairments 
of acids. And you said most of that is in the United States in the fourth quarter. No, I'm not referring to goodwill impairment, but to acid impairment. The costs, yes, these are restructuring costs in the US. And impairment throughout the country, so, uh, across all countries, I'm sorry, acid impairment. And then you were referring to a depreciation and extraordinary depreciation, that is cash costs. Seven million out of eight um, were in the fourth quarter. And how much of the 13 million extraordinary depreciation was accounted for by the fourth quarter. I think most of that was booked in the fourth quarter. So essentially, depreciation would have been lower in the fourth quarter. Any further questions? You mentioned the hybrid bond and the maturity. Uh, it would uh, change to 325 basis points plus Euribor three months, but it would go up by 100 basis points every year. So it would go up to 425 basis points? No. As of 2017, we would be paying 325 basis points above Euribor three months. No, no, just once. It wouldn't be 425 basis points as of uh, 2018. If the basis, if the underlying interest rate is two uh, percent, that would be calculated on a on an annual basis. Now, you were thinking of a continuous increase year after year. No, this is not the case. There is a step up or step down only once. Because in the, in the prospectus, it says per annum. No, it's only once, a step up only once. Any further questions? If this is not the case, I'd like to thank you very much uh, for having attended this conference. We wish you a pleasant uh, Shrove Tuesday. Um, have fun uh, during the rest of the carnival, and I look forward to seeing you again at our next press conference.